What's up, Rockstars? Today I'm going to be unboxing this Monkstone Miniatures set. I haven't even seen these at all yet. I'm excited to. It came in a uh, like a cardboard box, but I didn't know exactly what it was, so I opened it up, saw what it was, and I got the camera, and we're going to record this. Now, one thing to note is that the Kickstarter is live just today at the time of posting, so down in the description below will be a link to the Kickstarter, and you can see kind of what's on offer and the prices and all that kind of stuff, but... I'm just going to be looking at the miniatures themselves. And you can see here, there's some really, really interesting and unique and cool art here. So um, my understanding is that these miniatures are going to um, be expanded over time into kind of a whole world and possibly even a game. But you have all these kind of named uh, characters. So you have like these little guys here, um, which <laughs> look super cool. By the way, I love the art style that this has. I think it's really, really nicely drawn. And you have the snail guy. And then these like this nasty person, and then the three little pigs, but <laughs> Gorgrot, Grunlock, and Porgroth. So a uh, lovely naming there. <laughs> uh, but just cool little art things that you get. It looks like on the back you actually get some uh, information, and then I don't know what uh, all of this is per se. And this might be unique to this copy here. This might be prototype stuff. I don't know. Don't know. Um, You'll have to check the Kickstarter again to, I guess, find out exactly what you're getting. But I'm just here for the minis. So I actually saw these minis, and I was like, oh my gosh, these are actually really cool. I totally want to see these. All right, so let's just take a... I guess let's take all the bags out. I'll build them, and then you can see them. Uh, but that's it on here. Either way, this was actually quite nice. I wasn't expecting anything with, you know, the, the, the name on there. Even if it's just a sticker, it's nice. I like that. And these prints actually look great. Um, let's go ahead and look at the snail because that's obviously an exciting one. Uh, <laughs> well, the snail guy really got me. Once I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is like a freaking cool snail. All right, so there's his head and his gigantic body. <laughs> All right. Um, so I can tell right away. Hold on, hold on. Got it. Um, that the texture right here is actually really nice like I'm sure you can hear that you know on the fish scales really well done this is also very clean and I'm not seeing anywhere where he like cleaned it um, I'm not seeing obvious like oh I scraped the mold line here kind of thing there's a little um, post right here right that needs to be cut out um, but otherwise he's got a hand and a head so minimal um, uh, assembly too, which is also quite nice. Like there's some, uh, like sh like this is a sharp point. This like weird bear trap thing. Uh, very cool, very nice. I actually think this is quite quite well detailed. I like this. Uh, a good transition here to the smooth part here. These uh, clasps here are actually really really nice. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just so you can see perhaps a little bit better. But again, I'll show off the miniatures too. There you go. Now you can kind of see maybe a little bit better. Um, so there is a little bit of a, a part here as well. So this is kind of where the uh, mold was, but it's very, I mean, this is actually very well done. Very impressive. I like that a lot. All right, let's take a look at the other pieces here. Maybe if I can open it. Always the hardest part of these. Let's just take a look at all the pieces here. Looks like he's got a staff. All right, come on. Okay, <laughs> a little sword and his head. Okay, so here is his head. And look at that. See, one of the nice things about resin is they fit perfectly. Because it's so hard, it breaks cleanly, which means when you get a cut like that, the line pretty much just goes away um, to the point where you can barely tell that there's a seam there. A little bit on the top, right? But on this bottom part, like it looks like one piece. And that's always been impressive to me and always been nice. There's not a lot of gap fill or anything like that. So um, I can see right here he's got a few supports still here as well that I'll cut. Right, so a few supports there. You can see his eyes here uh, are kind of divoted in. And uh, either way, I think he looks pretty darn cool here. So here's his, uh, his little walking stick staff with his little skull on and everything. Uh, this, is, this is really nice. I like this a lot. Uh, some more posts here. Uh, one thing I will note is the uh, 
the branch itself doesn't really have a whole lot of texture. There's a little bit of a line here, a little bit of a line down here, but for the most part, this is pretty smooth. Now, it depends on the type of wood, um, but a lot of times a printed green is kind of nice. That's really the only thing I'm seeing. Otherwise, these like uh, little tiny uh, vegetables here and the wrappings all look good. This is very well done. This is nice. And I don't know where the sword goes. I'll have to look at the uh, miniature again. So again, that's the sword there. Um, it must go somewhere on him, and I'll just have to find where it is. But I'll 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 glue that on. I'll show you guys, um, and uh, we'll look, take a look at him. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few more pieces, um, but but just a little bit because I want to build them, and then we can take a look. Uh, let's look at one of the small guys. It looks like look at this. This is um on one piece almost. So that's probably a good idea. Come on, come on, little dude. <laughs> All right. Very little guy here. So he's just got his uh, hand here, which again, there's a little bit of a, uh, a post here that I'll have to uh, cut. But otherwise, that'll just kind of go in like that or, you know, one of those angles there. But just looking at him again, this rope is really, really well done. Like, uh, it just has a great texture to it. I am noticing... There's a little divot here, and I I imagine, I bet, it's because this goes in there. I bet it goes in kind of like that. All right, so I have to clean, I'll clean that off. But anyway, this this will sit right there is my suspicion. Again, I'll build it. I'll let you guys know. But the detail-wise, again, this, like this hair looks great. He's even got like this little bump on his head. Eye patch looks good. Um, the nostrils, if you see inside the nostrils, those look great as well. Inside the sack, also really, really well done. A little patch there. There is a little bit of a, uh, a spot here that'll need to be filled. Um, so I'll need to fill that up, but that's, again, super easy. And you can see a little bit of a mold line more here. So you can see kind of just on the underside there. But then again, it kind of almost just disappears as you get to the rest of the model. These are some of the cleanest miniatures I have ever seen. Like, no joke, hands down. These are really, really nice. Um, I've gotten miniatures from Celestial. I've gotten miniatures from uh, Limbo. Limbo is probably the closest other one when it comes to... It doesn't need a whole lot of... Um, that's his arm, by the way, not a post. A um, whole lot of cleanup. Uh, Celestial certainly has a lot of resin do, and that's just, you know, part of, part of life, I think. Let's take a look at this guy. We'll take a look at this guy, and then I'm going to build them, and I'll, I'll talk about them once they're built. So let's take a look here. Nice that they all come in packs like this. Okay, and again, the uh, just the, the the folds and the textures and all that. I don't know which way this is supposed to go. Um, really, really well done. And these are really clean, too. You can, again, see a seam line on this one. Which again, actually, this is still, I'm still happy with this. I, I'm used to a lot worse. This will need to be cut here and trimmed down. There's a little bit of that kind of like really skinny flash from between the two. But again, not bad at all. Uh, their casting from their, uh, I'm assuming, silicone molds are very well done. Whoever's casting these is quite good at it. A little bit of a, a nick here uh, for whatever reason. You could leave that in. It almost fits in or you could smooth it out. Um... But yeah, no, I mean, look, like just these little bits of keys here, and it's thick enough to where it's not just going to fall off because resin is really, th you know, uh, brittle, and so if you do too skinny pieces or too long of pieces, it could break off. But I'm not seeing anything that's not supported pretty well right here, maybe, but it seems pretty good. Um, this is uh, where again his weapon will hold. And actually, you see that quite a few, uh, um, uh, a lot of the, the miniatures will have that. So it just goes in just like that. It's a nice glue point there, too. You can rough that up and just glue it right in. So, uh, yeah, very good. And as you can see, it goes on real clean. Uh, and again, the faces are hilarious. There are alternate faces. I guess I'll show that real quick. Real quick, just so you can see it. But then I'm going to build them. I want to build them. I don't know if you can tell or not. Come on. Come on. I love when you have options. And so this one you have two options. Essentially, you could have a mask or no mask. Uh, so it just kind of depends on what you want, but that is fantastic. Uh, both look really cool. 
Um, they're pretty much the exact same in the in the sense that like the face is the jaws open the same, the ears are the same. It's the same face, just one has a hat, one doesn't. It's not a different emotion or anything like that. The tusks are still coming out. Those tusks look cool, by the way. Um, super nice, clean lines. This is this is gonna be great. Okay, all right, let's build them, and I'll cut you right back up. All right, I'm back, and they are built. Now, a few caveats here. This guy's all glued together, but some of them are going to have some putty, just because I don't want to paint behind, you know, a weapon or, uh, you know, a, a shield or something like that, or I haven't decided what head to use. There's some alternative heads. I'll show you that. Um, additionally, this did not come with any bases. Now, I have bases, but it's something to keep in mind. But you could put these on a plinth, or you could put it on like a large display base or a smaller one. I believe there is a game involved at some point. So you might want to figure out what size base that might involve if it's a game where that's important. Um, and you want to use them as game pieces. And maybe you want them in D&D or something like that. You can make the decision. It's up to you. But um, any, either way, it did not come with bases. And I haven't ba based them yet either because I need to plan that out for myself. Looking at this, so you can kind of see them actually put together here, you know, and they clean up really well, you know, at least like these right here cleaned up really good. Um, the sword actually went back here. He's kind of like a collector guy. Um, he's got like this bear trap here, which is cool. And then, of course, the staff. And, you know, it, he looks very much like a traveler. He's, uh, again, like I said, he like always reaching back there. Not a whole lot to say about him, though, just because, he, you know, he only had a few pieces to begin with. Uh, the one thing I will note is um, this right here is flat and I kind of noticed that as I was gluing it uh, you could paint it black or a dark you know color of whatever the shell is or something like that to kind of make it look like there's some depth um, but that is a little flat there that's not really the only thing I noticed this rope by the way is great it really is just sounds awesome love it okay anyway that's that's the snail let's go ahead and, and take a look at one of the more impressive pieces I find so this is whoever this is, <laughs> this um, very nasty looking lady. And one thing that I noticed was like the, the forehead ridges are, look great. The ear lobes, like the inner ears are incredibly detailed actually. It's very, very good. This is one where again, this is puttied here um, just because again, painting in between here is annoying, but look at the inside of that shield. Uh, like very, very well done. I love how the rope is pulled into her hand there. That looks amazing, looks very good. Wrapped around her arm there as well. Just in general, really, really well done. I love the little kind of like root person that she has here. Um, along with the, you know, the sickle and the, again, the hair is always well done. The stitching on the side, again, also very good. Um, just in general, really good. There's a little frog trying to come out of her, uh, uh, satchel here and it's little details like this that I really appreciate in any miniature I just think that's so cool that you know you, th This could be the exact same miniature without that and I would still think it's good But when they add little things like this little frog trying to escape here best of luck guy um, I just think that's so great. It's really really nice to see that attention to detail uh, There is a tongue and teeth in there as well. These are really really well done like the really good sculpted eyes Really happy with these. All right, let's take a look at another one here. Let's take a look at Mr. Lantern Guy. So here's Mr. Lantern Guy. Um, what's interesting about him is the chain mail. So this has chain mail. So first of all, resin is always so good with uh, armor like this because it does hard lines very good and you know scratches and etches. Uh, the tusks coming out, by the way, look great. It's very um, actually robust uh, resin. I'm going to show you that in a little bit here. Uh, obviously, the lantern will be great for some OSL. Um, there's not a whole lot, except that I noticed that they all actually had these little tails, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and then this one, I did pick the head. So this one is kind of actually glued on there. Uh, but I'll show you the alternate head. The chainmail is not the best that I've ever seen, but still really, really good. So there is, like, um, the chainmail up above here. The little... Um, filled in there you can see spots that are maybe filled in a little bit and then there's this space up here um, that it looks like it's this metal plate goes into which is fine but it's just kind of an odd uh, you know delimiting line here uh, but overall I'm very happy with the resin so you can see or, or the um the chain mail you see right here it's really good right there it the texture gets a little kind of filled in 
right there, as you can see, and there's a little divot there too. Now, chain mill doesn't have to be perfect at all, actually, so it still works. Um, and uh, these little pieces here are great, um, but you see like this compared to maybe a little bit softer there. Um, just one thing I noticed with him. Otherwise, though, incredibly happy. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with these. These look great, and I think this would be a lot of fun to paint. All right, let's go ahead and, oh, let's take a look at the alternative. So the alternative head was this. Now, each of them have different heads. In fact, I'll, I'll show you all three alternates uh, just because I want to show you the difference in size and stuff as well. Here's another one. Again, this one is like this because there's some putty there. Otherwise, it would fit very flush. I picked this head to show you guys just because the wrinkles I thought looked amazing. Love the wrinkles. And then those deep holes in there are just fantastic. Really, really happy with uh, the, the sculpted head here. And just, uh, again, anytime you can get, this is not a separate piece. This is one piece, but it looks separate. And that's really hard to do in a sculpt. To just make it look like it's that separate. There's actually a little bit of overhang there. That's done incredibly well. Um, very sharp angles off of it, off of his skin. It just it just looks great. Um, he's probably the least armored of them. He's got this huge axe, which again fits perfectly here. There's not some kind of oddity there I need to fill in or anything like that. Um, honestly, really impressed with that. Uh, this fit in well. And then anytime that they are fitting in hands like this or like this, they'll always put a band here. See how the, the band is right here? You see how the band is right here? That's on purpose to kind of hide the gap a little bit. And I think that is, I love when I see that happen. Anytime I see that happen, I know that the um, the sculptor really knows what they're doing uh, because like this, I'll need a little bit of gap fill. And I, I could have, tr I'm not the best assembler and I tend to be a little uh, fast and lazy. Uh, so I could have trimmed the the nub part that went in a little bit to make it a little bit more flush, but I didn't do that. And I said I'll just get some uh, some putty, and I'll, it'll take me a couple seconds to fill that in. But you notice here, I don't have to fill this in at all. Like this is just a, a perfect fit, and the reason it's perfect is because again, it goes into that a little bit, and that makes a natural line that should be there anyway. So anytime uh, you can combine it with a fold, or you can combine it with a, a band of some kind. That's an awesome way to do it. That's how you should do it. And I really appreciate that attention to detail. Again, little tiny tail. Oh, one of the nice things I liked about this was those uh, those uh, keys that I, I already pointed them out a little bit to you, but they're really, really well done. Uh, they just look really nice. Okay, uh, we're gonna go and keep going with the pig. So here's the last pig here. And again, this is not glued in uh, just because I don't wanna have to you know paint behind that. That'd, that'd be kind of silly. Um, but a few accommodations, you'll notice that there is no spike here and I'm assuming that's on purpose because of this, that it's not poking into it because it would otherwise. So that's actually, um, useful and it just kind of looks like battle damage is fine. There's a dent here too and a slash here. So it works and it makes the miniature actually kind of possible too. Um, so here you'll notice that there is a split there. This one's not as well hidden. And again, I could have trimmed this up to make it a little bit nicer. However, again, look at that. Like I don't have that. That just looks fine. That's even a dry fit. Uh, so you can see a little bit in there. It's actually popped out a little bit. I should push it. Oh, see, there you go. You can take it off. Um, it just kind of fits right in. And uh, I didn't have to do some weird alignment or anything like that. I just glued them in fine. And uh, then uh, you can almost just press it in there. In fact, if I put some putty or something like that. Anyway, uh, this is this was the more advanced one. Uh, I chose the unarmored version. He has a much longer snout than the rest. Again, I want to show you the different face sculpts. Um, this was a separate piece, and this was a separate piece as well. But as you can see, it ended up looking fantastic. Like, really, really good. Um, this is also a separate piece. It's supposed to kind of lay on there, but it still glues right there. And there's a little divot there for it, just to kind of keep it nice and, and secure. So that's really, really secure. And I, I love the the uh, attention to detail around here and in the bands down there. And then, of course, all the scuff marks and all that. Just looks really cool. And he's definitely one of the more aggressive ones. You can tell he's kind of advancing forward, uh, which I appreciate. The other ones are kind of more lumbering. Okay, here's one of the other little guys I didn't show you. Again, look at the inside of that shield and tell me that does not look great. That looks awesome. I love it. There's a tiny bit of fill right in here around the hand where, uh, you know, obviously that would normally not be filled, but it is here. Um, just to add some security to it and whatnot. One thing I wanted to note is this right here. You see how this sword bends? 
So there are different kinds of resin. I don't know exactly what resin they used, but I actually really appreciate this. I might actually have to do a hot water treatment on this resin to get that. You notice it's actually a little bent. Um, I think I might have done it when I was actually gluing it on there. I may have forced it a little bit. Um, however, uh, some resin will just be incredibly hard, even, even with this. I've, I've had it where it's just really, really hard and brittle resin that chips away very easily. The fact that I can bend this shows that these can still be playing pieces, and I'm really happy with that. It explains why there are no broken pieces. I didn't, out of this whole box, I didn't get any, uh, which is great. Anytime you're getting resin, you don't want that at all. And these were just in bags in a, in a, you know, a bubble wrap. Uh, and they, again, they came out great. So I don't want to say too much more about him. I just wanted to point out that sword, um, that it was bent a little bit. I think I did it. And, um, and again, the fact that the resin is so bendable, um, but you still get that really good hard detail, but it's playable. And I like that. Okay. I already mostly showed you him. I'm going to show you the final version of him. Again, it's just, a uh, gluing on that. And again, the band's right there. So it blends right in. So when you paint this up and prime it, it'll look great. Uh, it had another contact point here. Uh, none of these are awkwardly um, glued. All of them have good contact points. Even the back of, of this had a little divot in there. And then it actually touches right there as well. I probably could have glued that in too, but instead I glued it there and there. And that's now nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Okay. All right. So that's all of them. I wanted to show you real quick the uh, the different face sculpts here and the different options. You can see armored bug eyes over here. Um, but you can see even right then uh, just kind of how different they all look. You see how much fatter this one is? Uh, they're different tusks, right? Uh, so you kind of have like uh, largest, medium, and then small. This would look a little bit smaller if he didn't have such a huge, you know, armored kind of a uh, helmet to him. He's probably the most armored there. But... uh you can see like the the bottom of the chin there, especially just how different they are. They definitely look unique. They kind of have a different personality. Uh, their mouths are open at different ways. They have different kinds of tusks. So he has like a set of two very close. He only has two instead of four. He has four, but they're more separated. Um, all of them have <laughs> nose rings, but uh, their ears are different too and how far they point up. I was just really impressed with how unique they were. They definitely all kind of have their same personality. So... Uh, anyway, this is what you could get. Again, there is a link in the description below. Uh, the developers reached out to me, and he was great, and just was like, you know, hey, I'd like you to show off my stuff. I think it's really great. I said it looked really great, and that I would love to, because I would love to, um, mainly because I totally wanted to paint them. But that if I wanted to paint them, I figure some of you might as well. So this is kind of, I think, the whole range, at least what I have seen of it. We'll see what's there. Again, link in the description below. Uh, but again, these, these guys really, really great detail, very happy with them. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think about the miniature line and maybe where it's headed. And, uh, I'll talk to you guys again very, very soon.